You know, there's a lot I could share with you about the story of the two disciples on the road to Emmaus. It's a chapter of Luke that I've read uh, quite a lot and I know it quite well. It's one of my favourites in the Bible. It's one I've come back to many times. There's so much there and it's so rich. But actually, some of the things that I would normally share with you, or I'd want to share with you actually, are quite hard to share with you at the moment. Like so many things at the moment, these things are more difficult than usual. Take, for example, the thing, the fact that this story points us to the fact that we know Jesus most when we break bread together. That's the moment when those two disciples recognise him, of course. They didn't know who he was until he's with them and he breaks bread. And in that moment, they recognise who he is, that it is Jesus raised to new life. At the moment, of course, we cannot meet together to break bread. Or perhaps I could talk to you about how being with Jesus, listening to him and knowing him helps us open our hearts to others, how it helps us welcome others, how it helps us to recognise the strangers among us and welcome them into our church and into our lives, how to be generous people with how we welcome others. Because, of course, the disciples, if you noticed, they urged Jesus to come in. He made to go on, but they, they welcomed the stranger who pointed them towards God and urged him to meet with them. What a great image for us to welcome others around us. But of course, at the moment, we can't welcome anyone into our homes, let alone into our church. So it's quite difficult at the moment. Welcoming others, hospitality, sharing bread and wine together, these are really important parts of what it means to be a Christian. And we can't do them. It's difficult and it might make us feel quite uneasy. It might make us feel like we're not really doing enough. Like we should be doing more to help. Like we aren't getting things quite right. Having to stop and do nothing just doesn't feel right. It's like we're programmed to be people who are ready to do and to offer and to give. But at the moment, let's be honest, most of us at the moment can't do that. Certainly not in the ways that we're used to. So if you're feeling but uneasy about what it is to be a Christian at the moment, I think that's pretty normal. Don't feel bad about it. Certainly don't push yourself to do things which are actually unsafe. Because staying at home for most of us is actually the most loving thing that we can do. But actually, this, this, this difficulty points us to something that is actually quite important. Because it shows us that doing things isn't actually the most important thing. Now, this is something I'm really bad on, I don't know about you. But we can get so preoccupied in the things that we do to follow Jesus people that we're able to help, the activities that we're involved in with at church, the time we spend volunteering here or supporting this or that, that actually being a Christian ends up about us and about what we do. But it's never about us, it's always about God. And of course God does call us to go and to do and to follow him out there somewhere, of course he does. A large chunk of what it means to be a Christian actually has nothing to do with what we do. It's about who we are and who we are with. Did you notice that in the story, that part at the beginning that says Jesus himself came up and walked beside these two disciples? Jesus himself. How amazing is that? This is the key to the story. Those two disciples were with Jesus. And the same way, being with Jesus has to be central to our lives as Christians as well. After all, how can we follow someone if we don't know them? How can we learn from them? How can we learn from them if we haven't learned to be with them? How can we see what they're like and try to be the same if we don't spend time with them? Now, of course, there are a number of ways that we can be with Jesus. Many of them are which out there and the things that we do, the things that we're involved with. We don't, we aren't just with Jesus when we're in church or sitting quietly at home. But I want to talk about what we can do at the moment. 
and most of us are stuck in home, at home for most of the time. How are we going to spend time with Jesus? How are we going to learn from him? How are we going to know, get to know him? How are we going to be with Jesus in the middle of this lockdown? Well, I've got three things for us. The first two are pretty obvious, and I'm not going to spend ages talking about them because of that. Because the first one is we can pray. Prayer is not just about asking God for things, not just about bringing him those things that we're worried about or anxious about, although it is that as well, but it's about spending time with Jesus, listening to God, thinking, reflecting. It's about just being there. If you're part of our church, you'll have hopefully received one of these booklets. In it, it has services of morning prayer and evening prayer and night prayer or Compline. If you've never done, take, done this before, what a great opportunity to spend a bit of time with Jesus at particular points during the day. Can I, give you, can I encourage you to give it a go at some point this week if you haven't already done so? Maybe just pick one that you think would work for you and see what happens. See what happens when you spend a bit of time with Jesus during your day. The second thing we can do is to read the Bible. So if you think about the story that we've heard, those two disciples, they didn't just walk with Jesus, they listened to him as he explained all in the scriptures that were was there concerning himself. It must have been one heck of a Bible study. But it shows us that when we read the Bible, that it points us to Jesus, not just in the Gospels, but in all of it. So that when we read the Bible, when we get to know it, we get to know Jesus as well. Now, if you have one of those booklets, at the back of it, there's a Bible reading guide, a set of readings that will take you through the whole Bible, pick out some of the main characters and themes and stories. If you've always wanted to get to know the Bible a little bit more, be a bit more familiar with it or what happens when, then why not over the next month or two make use of that Bible reading scheme? The readings aren't too long and will take you through most of the things in the Bible give you a snapshot of some of the books at least. So praying and reading the Bible, well they're two pretty good things and they're things that we can definitely do at home but well I'm sure we've all heard these kind of sermons before haven't we? Extolling the virtues of praying and reading our Bibles. But actually I think, I think there's something more here, more in this passage from Luke. Because what did those disciples say about their journey with Jesus? Didn't our hearts burn as he spoke to us? What did Jesus do? He didn't just read the Bible, he explained it. He explained more of what their faith was about, helped them to get a handle on it for themselves, helped them to make sense of it. It's about more than just pointing us to the fact that part of what it means to be a Christian is to know God for ourselves. This isn't about words being told what to do. That's not what Christian's about, to be told what to do and just get on and do it. Even getting on and saying our prayers and reading our Bibles, for all they are great. But being a Christian is also, at its heart, about knowing God. This isn't just restricted to certain people, but to everyone who follows Jesus, you and me. That the most important thing we do as followers of Jesus is taking time to know God more, because he is not far away. Sometimes he turns up and walks right beside us. So how can we do this? Well, one of the ways that I found most helpful is learning from other people, people who are wiser than I am, who know God better than I do, who have been doing this longer than I have, who can point me to more of who he is. Of course, at the moment, our contact with other people is quite limited. So what I'm going to do in the next few minutes, the last few minutes uh, of this video, is to point to some things that I think might be useful. I'm going to start off, uh, I've picked three of my favourite books. Uh, I love reading. Books are a great way of learning from others, learning from other people's stories. So I'm going to pick three uh, and see what you think of them, just as examples of how it's really good and how we can learn from others. The first one is this one uh, by Rowan Williams called Finding God in Mark. Uh, it's a guide to Mark's Gospel uh, by Rowan Williams, who used to be the Archbishop of Canterbury. Now, if you know Rowan Williams, he's an incredibly clever man uh, and very erudite, but incredibly wise as well. This is an incredible opening up of Mark's Gospel 
uh, by someone who really knows it. But in a way, there's actually quite accessible. Look how thin the book is. It's wonderfully thin. You can read it uh, in a few sittings or take your time through it as much as you want. It's a brilliant book to open up a really important part of the Bible from someone who really knows what he's talking about. I'd really recommend that one uh, if you'd like to know a bit more about Mark. The second one is this one called Christianity Rediscovered. It's written, I think, in the 1970s uh, by a Catholic priest called Vincent Donovan uh, about how he went to the Maasai people of Kenya uh, and how it changed how he understood who God was and how he told them about Jesus and how that changed how he knew God for himself and how he learned to know God more for himself as he did that. It's more of a story account uh, as it tells about um, the stories and his, how he changed uh, as a person, as a priest, but it's really rich in what it tells us about God as well. Uh, so I'd really recommend that Christianity Rediscovered by Vincent Donovan. The third one I want to talk to you about is this one. It's called Simply Christian uh, by Tom Wright. Uh, Tom Wright, as I'm sure you know, used to be Bishop of Durham, uh, someone who's a prolific writer, but this is a really, really uh, clear account of the Christian faith. Uh, and a bit more of what it means to be a Christian and to follow Jesus in our lives. Uh, it's uh, one that's got lots of chapters in, you can dip in and out of it, you can read it and see what you think uh, for yourselves. There are three books uh, which, you know, take advantage of and read them if you like. You don't have to agree with everything they say, but they'll get you thinking. They'll inspire some thoughts and help to see something of God in your life as well. Another one I want to tell you about uh, is one called Saying Yes to Life. It's the Archbishop of Canterbury's Lent book for this year. I know we passed Lent, but it doesn't mean you can still read it. Actually, it's available free at the moment as a download. Uh, I'm going to put the link in the description below this video, about down there. Um, and all you have to do is sign up for the publisher's newsletter, and you can download that book free, Saying Yes to Life by Ruth Valeria. I haven't read it. I uh, hear it's good. Uh, so have a look at it and it's free and you don't even have to buy it and you can read it on your computer. Those books should be available if you can buy things on the internet. If you're going to struggle to buy things on the internet, give me a call uh, and we can work something out. Another thing that's available at the moment is uh, Spring Harvest. Spring Harvest is a Christian festival that's been running for about um, 35 years, I think, maybe slightly more than that. Uh, I went to it a lot as a teenager and it runs at Butlins and there's all sorts of workshops and seminars and talks. This year it hasn't been able to run because it normally runs over Easter but oh, there's a lot of content that they've put online on their YouTube channel. Again, I'm going to put the link in the description somewhere about there. Um, take a look at it. There's loads of different videos. So if you don't want to read something, if reading you don't really enjoy it or it doesn't really, it's not really your thing, you can watch these videos just like YouTube videos like this. And there's so much different things to choose from. Things that will stimulate you and help you to think uh, and really get uh, you going and help you to point towards God. God maybe is in our lives and in the world around us. There's some videos uh, by Bishop Paul, uh, who was due to speak at Spring Harvest in Harrogate, by but actually about so many different speakers as well. So there's loads to take advantage of there as well. These are just a taste there. There are loads of resources out there, loads of things that will get us thinking. You might have a favourite book that you've read maybe many years ago or come back to. Uh, why not take some time to read that again and see what God might be saying to you through that? If you have got something that you found really useful, why not share it in the comments? Again, they're below this video, somewhere down there, and help others and say, this has been really useful for me. Why don't you take a look at this? Or if you're on our WhatsApp group, you could share it on that as well. Uh, it's about helping us to know a bit more about those things that we found useful so that others might be able to do so as well. Or maybe you've never taken the time to do anything like this before. Maybe you've never had a favourite book, and you've never really read any books about our faith, uh, and that's fine as well. Why not give it a go? We've got quite a lot of time on our hands at the moment, so it's something that we can try, and if it doesn't work, well, then that's fine. Uh, but why not? What have we got to lose? If you're really not sure where to start, give me a call. Uh, we can have a chat about it. I'd love to be able to talk to you about this. And if you have any other ideas of different things we can do, let me know. Put it on the WhatsApp group, put it on the comments underneath this video. Um, we can see what we can do about them. This is about making the most of this chance that we have. 
this is a really hard time for many of us, but it gives us an opportunity as well, the opportunity of time. We haven't got much to lose, but we have got actually an incredible amount to gain. We have a chance to know God for ourselves a little bit more, not by doing, but by, by, by being and being with Jesus and recognising actually that is at the heart of our faith, getting to know God for ourselves. So my hope and my prayer is for all that this time is difficult and hard for so many of us in many different ways, that you might look back and see some times during this period where we think, didn't our hearts burn as we heard that about Jesus? So I encourage you to go and to think and to share, to read and to listen and to hear God and know God more for yourselves. Amen. I'm going to pray the collect now for today. So if you'd like to join in with me, we're going to pray. Risen Christ, you filled your disciples with boldness and fresh hope. Strengthen us to proclaim your risen life and fill us with your peace. To the glory of God the Father. Amen. 